Hello everybody, this is Pastor Green. We're doing another Bible study, 1 Samuel chapter 2. If you'd like me to come speak at your church or if you have any questions, you can send me an email at g-o-d-s-o-h-m-a-n at gmail.com or you can just comment below with any question you have. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 1. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies, because I rejoice in the salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none besides thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more, so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of the mouth. And the Lord is not God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bowels of the mighty men are broken, and they stumble or girded with strength. They that were full have hired themselves for bread, and they are hungry ceased, so that the barren can half mourn seven. And she said that as many children has waxed feeble. My Lord killeth, and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave, and bringeth up. My Lord make poor, and make rich, and he bringeth low, and lifteth up. He raised up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth the beggar from the dunghill, to set them among the princes, and to make them inherit the throne of glory, for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he that said the word upon them. She's basically saying that the Lord has done such exceedingly wonderful things. She's taken people that were lowly and made them mighty, people that were poor and made them rich. She, he, he stopped the enemies, he protected people. He does that all these amazing things, and that's why she loves the Lord so much. If you look at Psalm 75, it says, The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it, Selah. Galatians 2 says, And when James, Caiaphas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave unto me Barnabas, the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, that they are uncircum that they and they unto the circumcision. Revelation 3 says, Him that overcometh will make a pillar to the temple of my God. He shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of thy city, my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from God, and I will write him on a new name. They're talking about these different people that are, they call them pillars. They're people that are holding up the faith, the people that are really impactful for the gospel. And there's many different pillars in our lifetime that, you know, they, they're people that actually like show people how great God is. And I think that Hannah wants her son uh, Samuel to, to be one of these pillars, and she's giving him to the church because she knows that God can do amazing things. At the first Samuel 2, verse 9, And he will keep the feet of the saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. Keep the feet of the saints. All throughout our life, sometimes we stumble, sometimes we fall, sometimes the devil tries to get us to stumble. But if they keep the feet, they're not going to stumble. Deuteronomy 32 says, To me belongeth vengeance and repentance. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand. And the things that shall come upon them make haste. Psalms 38 says, For in thee, O Lord, I do hope that we are here, O Lord my God. For I say, Hear me, lest otherwise they shall rejoice over me, but my foot slippeth, that magnify themselves against me. Psalms 40, He brought me up also as a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. Psalms 94, Unless the Lord has become my help, my soul has almost dwelt in silence. When I said, My foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, help me up. Psalms 116, Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with me. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Psalms 121 My help cometh from the Lord, which has made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Proverbs 3 Then shall walk in the way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. 1 Samuel 2.10 The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken into pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunders upon them. The Lord shall judge them to the ends of the earth. And he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. And Elkneai went to Ramoth in the house of the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. So the, the, the boy Samuel got to go to Eli and just tell him about what he believes and what he thinks. Because he's now going to be a servant of the church. And he's going to be taught up in the right ways. Uh, and the next, the next verse is going to say that the sons of Eli were sons of Belniel. 
they knew not the Lord. And all throughout the Bible, it talks about this uh, Belial, and it's it's not exactly a good people, basically. So it says, Now the sons of Eli were sons of Baal, and they knew not the Lord. And the priest's custom of the people was that when a man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came, while the flesh was in seething, with a fish hook with three teeth in his hand. And he struck it out of the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot, and all the flesh hooks bought up the peace took for himself. They did in Shiloh until the Israelites came hither. So what happened was, you'd make this sacrifice, and this meat would sit in there and, and, and cook, and the fat would come out of the meat. And if you ever had like a really good rib, you know that the meat falls right off the bone. But while it was in there seething, they would take this little fish hook, as you see there on the right, and they rip, put it down there, they grab a piece of meat, they pull it out, and whatever meat was still stuck on the fish hook, the priests were allowed to eat. And anything else was basically just boiled up or burnt up for, the, for God. And they did this because the priests didn't have a job. So the way they, they survived is they lived in the temple and they also eat what was left over from the, from the, from the sacrifices, from the, the things that people bring in. So they had this custom that whatever you bring up in this fish hook, you could actually eat, but everything else has to stay in there for the burnt offerings. And before they burnt the fat, the priest's servants came, and to the man that sacrificed, give flesh to the roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man say unto him, let him not fall to burn the fat precisely, presently, and they take as much as thy soul desires, then he would answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give to me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore the sin of the young man were very great before the Lord, for the men aboard, aboard the offerings of the Lord. Basically what they said is these two men would say, we're not going to do it that way. We're not going to boil the, 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 the meat. We're not going to cook the meat on, a, on an oven and do it the way we're supposed to do. We're going to cut the meat the way we want it. We're going to take the flesh raw. We're not going to cook it. We're going to do it our, a different way. And if anybody says, oh, no, no, you have to do it the way that the priests say we have to do it, and they're going to take it by force. They're going to say, we're taking it anyways. They were not good people. But Samuel ministered before the Lord being a child, girded with a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him for year after year when she came to him and her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli blessed Elkni and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman, for the loan with a lent to the Lord. And they went their own way home. And the interesting thing about this ephod is the ephod was a, a type of a, a garment that you would wear. It would go on top of your shirt, and it would be different colors. And if you look over here, you can see the ephod. It was like this like colorful apron or colorful decoration on there. And it was basically to signify that this person was called out or consecrated for the Lord. You can look at these different outfits here. They had different robes, but only the high priest would wear an ephod. And so it's basically like to signify that Samuel one day is going to be a high priest. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto Israel, and how they lay with the women of the assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do these why do these such things? For I hear your evil dealings with all the people. So Eli knew his sons were being evil. They were doing the wrong things, the sacrifices, they were laying with the women at the gates, they were they were not being very good priests. And Eli had to, when he died, would have to have somebody take over, and he'd always have your kids take over, and knew they were doing evil, so he confronted them. So Eli came to his boys and confronted them. And it says, Nay, my sons, for it is not good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sins against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sins against the Lord, who shall entreat him for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not to the voice of their father, because the Lord would not slay them. Because the Lord would slay them. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both by the Lord and also with men. So Eli talked to his sons, and his sons didn't seem to care. But he had this boy servant that was given to him that seemed to grow more and more with not only the, the Bible, the Lord, but also people liked him as well. And there came a man unto a God unto Eli, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Did I plainly appear to the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? 
And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest? And to offer up mine altar to burn incense to wear an ephod before me? And did I give into the house of thy fathers all the offerings made by fire to the children of Israel? All throughout the Bible, God sends a man or a woman to warn the people before he brings judgment. He's saying, God's angry. If you don't change, things are going to happen. If you look at the books of the Bible, you have these areas called prophets. So these are these people that are prophets for God that tell the people what's going to happen, and they have a choice to listen to them or not. Revelation 6 says, And when I heard the Lamb open, and when I heard the Lamb open one of the seals, and I heard, and there was a noise of thunder, and one of the four beasts says, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he sat upon it, had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he opened the second seal, I heard a second beast say, Come and see. And they he went on another horse that was red, and power was given unto him to sit on to thereon to take peace from the earth, that they shall kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And he opened the third seal, and heard a beast say, Come and see. And behold, lo, a black horse. And he that sat on it had a pair of bounces in his hands. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And I see thou hurt the oil and the wine. And he opened the fourth seal, and I heard a voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat upon it was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto him, the fourth of the earth, to kill with a sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with beasts of the earth. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw unto the altar the souls of them that were slain for the world of God, and the testimony which they held. And he cried out with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, didst thou not judge the avenge of blood of them that dwell upon the earth? And a white robes were given unto every one of them that was sent unto them. They shall rest for yet a little season, and their fellow servants also, and the brethren that shall be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. And behold, he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and moon became as blood. John warned us in Revelations that some day soon, things are going to happen. It's not going to be great. You're going to have people come in here that are charismatic, and they're going to woo the people to follow what they say. And you're going to have another guy come, and he's going to have wars, and, and, and people are going to die because of that. And then another guy is going to come, and there's going to be pestilence, and there's going to be diseases, and there's going to be famine. And, and the people of heaven are saying, when are you going to continue to let this happen? And then on a sixth seal, that's when the rapture happens. You know, God sends prophets all the time to tell people what's going to happen, and we choose sometimes not to listen. But God knows what's going to happen, and he, he wants to warn us. So when he sends people, we should listen. You know, all throughout the Bible, we see that God sends his prophets to warn us. And sometimes we listen, and sometimes we don't. But John has told us that one day soon, there's going to be judgment on this earth, and I think we should listen. 1 Samuel 2, 29. Therefore kick at my sacrifice and mine offering, which I have commanded in my inhabitation, and honor thy sons above me, to make yourself fat with the sheepness of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I say indeed that thy house and the house of thy father shall walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, But as far as me, then to honor me I will honor, and then to despise me shall be light and esteemed. This person is telling Eli, you've done, a, you've done a decent job, but your boys, they're a problem. And if you don't step in there and take care of that, things are going to happen that's not going to be good for you. Behold, the days come, and I will cut off thine arm, and the arm of thy father's house, and there shall not be an old man in thine house. And thou shalt see the enemy in thy habitation, and all the wealth which God has given to Israel, there shall not be an old man in the house forever. And the man of thine, whom I sent to cut you off from thine altar, shall be consumed thine eyes, and grieve thy heart, and the increase of thine house shall die of the flavor of their age. He's telling him, if you don't stop soon, people are going to come here, and they're going to attack everything. And you're not going to be able to there to protect it. And there shall be a sign unto thee that shall come upon thy two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, and one day they shall die, both of them. And I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to what mine heart in my, in my mind. And I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before mine anointed forever. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left in thine house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver or for a morsel of bread. And shall say, Put me, I pray thee, into one of the priest's office, that I may eat a piece of bread. He's saying that if you don't step in soon, you're going to die, your boys are going to die, and I'm going to have to have somebody else replace you. 
so you better start talking to them now. You know, Eli didn't understand this, and he was kind of a, a frail and didn't listen. And we're going to see in the next chapter what's going to actually happen. As that's the video, I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, you can comment below or you can send me an email. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you like, subscribe, click the bell, tell your friends about it by sharing it. I'm going to put a couple links on the screen. The bottom right is going to be the first Samuel Bible study. The top left is, I think, is going to be the Genesis Bible study. And then the bottom left is going to be a video YouTube thinks you're going to like. I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have yourself a great day.